The Chargers sent a lot of coaches to the Michigan Pro Day, and of course, we all know why. It's because Jim Harbaugh, he was the former head coach at Michigan, but also, Jim Harbaugh is not going there just because he's going to support his guys at Michigan, but he's still going there on behalf of the Chargers in order to scout and evaluate his own former players. So today, we're going to be looking at who Jim Harbaugh is looking at and who the Chargers are looking at based off of the position coaches that they sent over there. And also, I just want to get this right out of the way first. JJ McCarthy is not on this list, okay? Justin Herbert is the quarterback of this team. Can we please stop talking about trading Justin Herbert? So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, bro. It helps me out so much. I had to get that out there because I'm still getting asked that question. So let's first look at the coaches that were actually sent to this Michigan Pro Day from the Chargers. Number one, Jim Harbaugh. We all know that. Also, Jesse Minter, the defensive coordinator of the Chargers, was sent over there. He is another Michigan man, so it doesn't surprise me that both of those Michigan guys are there. It may be worth noting that, you know, some of those other Michigan coaches that we have are not there, like uh, Steve Klinkscale is not there. He's the DB coach. But also, the other person who is there is Andy Biscoff. He's the tight ends coach but also the run game coordinator, so keep that in mind. But the tight end who is at Michigan, let's just start off with him, A.J. Barner. Now this guy, he's got really good size for a tight end, six foot six. He can block and he can catch really well, so you can line him up out wide, you can line him up on the inline of scrimmage or even in the slot. They lined him up all over at Michigan this past season. He's not a great route runner, but he's got really sure hands. He only dropped two balls all year. He did only have 32 targets, so you know you can argue the volume wasn't really there to get a good grasp of how good his hands are. But he came off the line really well when he was running routes. He was much better in run blocking this past season and had an 81.4 run blocking grade on 350 snaps, which was more than he was asked in the previous two years at Indiana. And at Indiana, he had a much worse run blocking grade. So Jim Harbaugh, he brought him in and this one year that he was at Michigan, developed him into becoming a much better blocker while also having the best receiving season of his career. Now, I don't know if it's just me or because I've been watching film of this guy recently, but he kind of has some shades of Hayden Hurst and the Ravens, they drafted Hayden Hurst, I, I think in the first round. And also they just signed him to come back and play for the Chargers. And AJ Barner, I think you could get this guy on day three He'd be a really nice value pick in that range and he can block and he can catch. This is exactly what you want in a tight end in the Greg Roman system. But remember I said Andy Biscoff, he's the run game coordinator as well. And Blake Corum is the running back at Michigan. Now they also are setting up a meeting with him source on that is literally Blake Corum himself. He said it on the Rich Eisen show. So obviously there is a lot of interest here. He's five foot seven. 205 pounds at five foot seven, man. He has great vision and he can get yards after contact. He's a really, really good athlete and he's going to find yards when there are none to be had. And listen, I know that Michigan offensive line, they were really freaking good. But if you watch the tape, his ability to cut and manipulate defenders into blocks to gain yards and be able to force missed tackles and run through contact, it really stands out. He's pretty good in pass protection as well. So he's a complete running back. That's very important. The injury and the age is the only thing that concerns me. If you only have him though on that rookie contract when you draft him and then you let him walk, I think you could get some really great value because then you only have him for that first four years he's in the NFL probably before his body starts breaking down because again, those injury and those age concerns, they're real. And then you let him walk after that rookie contract for a comp pick in the future. And then by the time that he's done and, and ready to walk in free agency, you're already gonna have like three or four other running backs that can give you similar value. And at that point, they're gonna be younger. I love Blake Corum as a running back. Don't get me wrong. But as a prospect, there are some real concerns here with the age and with that knee issue. This past season, he didn't look as good as he did before the injury. That's my main concern, to be honest with you. I would still draft him, though, because I think the floor for him is extremely high. And he is a Harbaugh dude through and through. And by the time that he's off of that rookie contract, you let him walk in free agency, you get a comp pick. And then by that time, you're going to have three or four other guys 
that are younger in that backfield and they can give you similar value, hopefully. I mean, that's that's the Joe Hortiz strategy. And since Andy Biscoff was there and he's not only the tight ends coach, but the run game coordinator, we got to talk about some of these offensive linemen. There's a ton of them. Zach Zinter was the guard. We also have Drake Nugent, the center. Trevor Keegan was another guard. He's also in the draft this year. Trent Jones is an offensive tackle. He's 6'4", 305. He's got some pretty good size on the outside. And then also Ladarius Henderson and Carson Barnhart. Those are both offensive tackles. So there are three tackles, a center and two guards that were at the Michigan Pro Day. Man, there are 18 draft eligible players at Michigan this year. They might break the record for most drafted players. I think that record is held by Georgia in 2022. I think they had 15. So that just goes to show how great that program is at Michigan that Jim Harbaugh built and how great that strength and conditioning program was that Ben Herbert built. I mean, we are so lucky to have these guys and I, I can't wait to see who they actually get from Michigan. But yeah, all of those offensive linemen, wouldn't surprise me to see any of these guys drafted by the Chargers in day three, but also in undrafted free agency. If I had to pick one of these offensive linemen to draft, I would probably go for Zach Zinter. And then like Drake Nugent, there's an argument to be made there just because we need a center so bad. But I like Zach Zinter at that right guard position. I think he would fit in really well. He is a big physical presence at the guard position. I would love to have him. Now let's talk about some of these defenders that the Chargers could draft because Jesse Minter was there. Mike Sanristil is the first name that stands out. He was actually recruited as a wide receiver to play at Michigan. He transitioned to cornerback. He's only five foot nine, so he wouldn't be able to play on the outside. And you know, we really need an outside corner right now. But this is a dude who has such a high football IQ and a great feel for the game. He comes off the edge as a cornerback so quickly, and he is so explosive coming downfield. I mean, Jesse Minter loved blitzing him, and Mikey was so smart at not showing his hands and disguising those blitzes. He can tackle too, although he did miss seven tackles this past season. He obviously also has great ball skills. I think he had six interceptions this past year. I mean, he was a wide receiver for longer than he was a cornerback. Of course he can catch the ball, but there is no doubt in my mind that this guy is gonna come into the NFL right away and everyone is gonna say, dang, we should have just drafted that guy and not have gotten all concerned about the size and the athleticism scores because this is one of those, you just bang the table because you wanna pick him so bad because his tape is so good and he could really fit on any team. If the Chargers wanna draft him, it would probably have to be in the second round. I would rather get a bigger corner on the outside like TJ Tampa, but Mike Sandra still at, you know, pick 37, I would still love it because he's such a good football player. Another guy that I think could actually be a really good fit on this defense is Junior Colson. He was the linebacker. He was from Haiti, actually, and he moved to America at eight years old. He was a freshman All-American, and he started all three years at Michigan. He is six foot two, 238 pounds, and ran at four, five, eight, 40. So he doesn't have great speed, but he's got good size, and his quick reaction time and instincts they make up for any lack of speed that he does have. He hasn't played football for really long, but you can tell this dude is smart and he is so quick to read and react, which is one of the most important things at linebacker. Sometimes he doesn't play the run really well. He shoots gaps. Sometimes it's the wrong gap, but overall he's a pretty good run defender and he can also cover. So this isn't like an, another Kenneth Murray all over again. And he's 21 years old, extremely hard worker. He's got a great story and he's gotten better every single year. This is a guy that you bet on and he is so physical with good size. And those are the two things that are most common with these prospects that Joe Hortiz is looking at. And then the other linebacker, Michael Barrett. This guy is rangy and he has the speed and the athletic athleticism that you want at linebacker 233 pounds and ran a 4-5 he's got a really good wingspan as well that's going to help him shed blocks and bat down balls in zone coverage he needs to be a better tackler though and read the run better but he plays fast just needs to have better instincts and read what the offense is doing uh better Michael Barrett I think he can be had on day three like 
in maybe in the fifth or the sixth round, this would be a nice piece at linebacker. Now, I've seen this guy be mocked to the Chargers a lot. Chris Jenkins, the defensive lineman, he's a really good run defender, and he has the size that you want in the middle. He's over 300 pounds. He has a quick first step and can be used well in stunt moves. He also has elite speed at the defensive line position, and his dad was an NFL player for a long time. The questions with him, though, are the shorter arms and not being able to get leverage to disengage off of blocks or reach out for a tackle off of a block and, and also his pass rush ability. Now, PFF has his pass rush win rate at 11% and he actually had 20 pressures, which isn't bad for a guy who played most of his snaps at three or five technique, mostly in the B gap. Uh, if you want to stop the run, he was the 13th best graded run defender coming out this year as graded by PFF. And he has the size, he has the strength and run defending ability that Jim Harbaugh values. I mean, just look at the Denzel Perriman signing. They value run defense. But then, I mean, you can also look at Puna Ford. I mean, he's got a lot of pass rush potential at that same position playing at like three or five tech. So maybe they end up going for someone who has more pass rush ability, but if they really just want that run defense, Chris Jenkins, he's as good as it gets. Now, the last guy, he's going under the radar, but I actually really like him, Josh Wallace. He's a cornerback. He's got the size. He's 5'11". He can play outside. He is only 185 pounds, so you, you'd like to add a little bit, like add 10 pounds onto that frame, and that would be a really like ideal size for outside corner. He's very aggressive. He can come downfield and tackle. He can get handsy at times, just like those Alabama corners can. And we know that they have shown a lot of interest in them. But the Chargers, they love that aggressiveness because of the signing of Christian Fulton, because of what we see and how they are scouting these defensive backs so far and the guys that they're meeting with. He only missed two tackles, by the way, and he had a breakout year at Michigan after four years at the University of Massachusetts. This is an under the radar day three player that I think if he continues to develop under Jim Harbaugh, he could really, really be a great corner. I mean, he developed just immensely in only one year with Ben Herbert and Jim Harbaugh. Imagine what he could do with two or three more years with Jim Harbaugh and Ben Herbert. I, I really think that this guy could develop to be a very good outside corner. I see shades of it, man. He is really good at run defense and he's a really, he, he's not a really good cover corner because I mean, listen, this guy's going to go day three. He has issues, but he has shown flashes of being able to cover very well. Again, really aggressive and comes downfield. That's, it seems like that's what they want at corner. So this isn't every Michigan prospect. There's 18 of them, but I think these are the ones that have the most chance of being drafted by the Chargers or being on the Chargers next year because some of these guys might go undrafted. I don't know. We'll see how the draft plays out. But if you did not see my video yesterday, I was talking all about what Joe Hortiz had to say, and he wants to trade even more during the season. 